showing us how to do some cool science experiments at home. Oh, wow. Wait. The first science experiment we're going to try. What the? That is so cool. Is the constellation viewer. Helping me out in today's video is Sandra. Hi. Say hi. This is our friend. Hey, Hope is behind the guys. camera right now. Found all of the things we'll need. Toilet paper roll, flashlight, tape, safety pin, and we have our constellations. All right, so first we're going to pick out which constellation. So we cut out the constellation we're going to do. And next, we're going to tape the constellation right on the open part at the top. So it sits right in the empty space of the tube, and we're just going to tape it down. Normally, the science experiment calls for rubber bands, but we had tape at hand. So that just shows how easy it is to do these at home with what you have. So it's nice and secure. Now that it's taped, what the instructions say the next thing to do is get something like a toothpick or a safety pin. Make sure it's okay that you use it or you have a parent helping you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna poke holes where all of these little, almost like trace it, and poke holes where each little thing is. We're going on an adventure! Wait, so to the closet. Yes, we have our flashlight and our star constellation. We're gonna go into a dark room. I'm gonna show you how it works. Here Let's we go. go. All right, we're in a dark <gasps> closet. We got the flashlight. Ready? Yeah. Let's see how this I'm works. Nervous. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in the bottom. Oh. oh. Wait. Wait. Put it like. What the? That is so cool. Stop. How on earth does it? experiment. Woo! Okay guys, so now Hope is helping me out with this next project. This is experiment at home number two. It is Marshmallow Tower. Have you ever wondered how skyscrapers can be so tall? Or how people build bridges to span long distances? We use engineering to come up with ways to build tall, long, and sturdy structures. Using spaghetti noodles and marshmallows, you will explore the best way to build your own strong structure. We went around and we found some marshmallows and some spaghetti noodles. Oh. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a little marshmallow tower. So we each have a bag of marshmallows. We're gonna, I'm gonna eat some. Hop right in this. And then, and then we'll go up. All right, so here's our first foundation. Structure, guys. Now I'm Yay. gonna put some spaghetti noodles on top as like a roof. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> You're just making a spaghetti noodle mess, though. No. I'm making a roof. I feel like those guys, you know. I know the army boys. Yeah. That build the houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Guys, look at our little hut we built. It's so cute. I think we, we did, did it. it. Woo. And you too can try this one at home. Yeah, you just have marshmallows and spaghetti noodles, or not even. You could have, you could use toothpicks, there's popsicle sticks, straws. Yes. There's so many things around your house you could use to make a fun structure. Okay, so now we're gonna measure it and see how tall it is. Let's see. It is five, five inches. inches. Using a square or triangle foundation at the bottom made it a lot easier to build up. And if we wanted to, we could build a huge tower, a big old bridge just out of spaghetti noodles and marshmallows. On to the next experiment. Hundreds of years, scientists have been looking at gases and how temperature, volume, and pressure affect each other in a gas. Generally, the hotter a gas is, the bigger its volume will be, or the more pressure it will exert on its container. If you compress a gas and make the volume smaller, however, its temperature will also decrease. 
In today's activity, we will explore the relationship between volume and pressure to teach us how to get the balloon inside of the bottle. Our first step is always safety. To get started on this one, you'll need a large bowl, ice, water, a glass bottle, a balloon, and a rubber band if you want to secure it. First, we're going to fill up the bottle with the hottest water you can get from the sink. Let that water sit in the bottle for about five minutes. While you wait, put some ice in the large bowl and fill it with about two thirds of cold water from the sink. Next, you'll want to pour the water from the bottle into the sink and stretch the balloon over the top of the bottle. If you want to secure it with a rubber band, this ensures a good seal, but is not necessary. Next, let's make a prediction. What will happen to the balloon when the warmed bottle with the balloon is placed in cold water? Next, take the bottle and hold it in the cold water. Watch the balloon closely. You should see the balloon start to shrink and eventually get sucked into the bottle. This happens because the bottle and balloon are close to the outside air but are still affected by air pressure. As hot air takes up more space than cold air, the air in the bottle at the beginning of this experiment is still filling the balloon. Putting the balloon on top of the bottle has trapped the air inside. As the air cools, it takes up less space, which means that this is also exerting less pressure on the balloon. The air pressure outside the balloon has not changed, so it starts to squish the balloon down. Eventually, the air in the bottle loses so much volume that the air pressure outside the bottle can push the balloon into the bottle. Remember to clean up when you're done. Pour ice and water down the drain, recycle or put back the glass bottle, and throw the balloon away. Put any other materials back where they belong. Have you ever wondered what happens during a chemical reaction? Chemical reactions happen when substances encounter each other and change their molecular structure. Sometimes these reactions are dramatic, like sodium and water, and sometimes they are simple, like milk curdling from orange juice. The reaction between baking soda and acid has been known for a long time. Its most common use is in baking, where the carbon dioxide gas that is produced makes things puff and rise. The first known instance of baking soda for this purpose was from a cookbook in 1796. In today's activity, we will use a liquid and a solid to create a gas. Our first step is always safety. To get started, we'll need an empty bottle, a spoon, a funnel, baking soda, vinegar, and a balloon. First, pour about four tablespoons of vinegar into the bottle. Next, stretch the end of the balloon over the small end of the funnel and a generous scoop of baking soda into the funnel so it falls into the balloon. Next, remove the funnel and stretch the end of the balloon over the top of the bottle with the vinegar in it. But make sure that the baking soda stays in the balloon. Let's make a prediction. What will happen to the balloon when you add the baking soda to the vinegar? Comment down below. Carefully tip the balloon upright so the baking soda falls out of the balloon into the vinegar. Let the reaction happen and observe what happens to the balloon. You should see the baking soda and vinegar mixture start to fizz. This is because the acidic acid and baking soda are reacting together to produce sodium acetate, carbon dioxide gas, and water. The carbon dioxide fills up the balloon and inflates it, while the acidic acid and sodium stay dissolved in the water. Make sure to clean up when you're done. You made it do that? That's cool. Have you ever reached down to grab something underwater and had to move your hand sideways to actually grab it? This is an example of how water bends or refracts light. Refraction is the way light bends when it travels through different materials, and you can even predict how much light will bend when it passes through something that is not air. Using this idea, you can calculate the speed of light through various materials. Isaac Newton even conducted experiments with prisms to try and learn how light and color were related, and further advance the scientific understanding of refraction. In today's activity, we will explore how refraction through water creates rainbows. To get started, we'll need a glass jar, water, white paper, and a flashlight or sunshine. To get started, first fill the jar about three quarters of the way with water. Let's make a prediction. What will happen to the light as it passes through the water? Place the paper under the jar so that when the light shines through the jar, you can see it on the paper. Let the sun or your flashlight shine directly on the jar. Observe what you can see on the paper. You may have observed a rainbow appear on the white paper. This happens because different colors of light refract or bend at different angles through the water. 
White light, like from the sun or flashlight bulb, is made up of a mix of all colors, which can be separated out using something like a prism or a glass of water. Red light bends the least as it passes through the water, and violet light bends the most. This is why rainbows are always in order from red to violet. Remember to clean up when you're done. So this cup definitely had the coolest rainbow and the most accurate looking rainbow. That was our last at-home science experiment. Thanks to 3M for sponsoring this video and showing us how to do some cool science experiments at home. Click the link down below to go to their website and check out all their cool, fun science experiments.